DMT is a psychedelic drug, right? I act like Billy Big Bollocks sometimes. Oh, let's go and do MDMA, let's have a line or whatever. But in reality, I can't really fucking deal with the come downs anymore. <laughs> Psychedelics, though. I've always been that person of thought. If I have acid, I will jump out of a window, me. <laughs> I've always shied away from that shit. But for some reason, right, my mate comes to me on that day and he goes, Hey, Paul, hey, got that DMT there, you know? And I was like, What the fuck's that? He went, It's metal trip to me. I went, What's that? He went, It's the stuff your brain makes just before you die. <laughs> And I was like, yeah. He was shocked. He was like, should it be a game? I was like, yeah. He went, mate, I've had this for months. No one will do it with me. I was like, fuck it, let's do it. He's a clinical psychologist, me mate, right? I've known him for years. So my reasoning was, if I'm going to do a heavy psychedelic for the first time, a brain doctor, probably the man for the job, innit? And he was very reassuring on the car on the way back. He's giving me all the spiel on it. He's like, DMT, Paul, it's a naturally occurring substance. Your brain makes it, as such, really effectively absorbed by the body. So your trip will last about five, ten minutes, after which you'll be completely sober. You'll be able to drive a car. No chance of adverse side effects. No chance of overdose. And I was like, absolutely sound. <laughs> Let's go and see some mad stuff. And he goes to mine. I walk in first. And he walks in behind me. He's been there before, so he knows. I've got all those, like, Philips Hue lights all through me. I was that change colour now. So as he walks in, he goes, Alexa, make lights pink. And I was like, what the fuck? And he goes, Alexa, play deep meditation music. And it just starts going, <laughs> Stands over me. He's a big fella as well. And he comes right over to me. He puts both his hands on my thighs. He looks deep into my eyes. He goes, right, Paul. We're going to do a guided meditation before we go on our journey. Because we need to make sure we're at the right frequency before we meet the spirits. I've made a mistake here. This is not a man of science at all. This man is in a cult. And he goes, have you ever done any meditation, Paul? And I was like, listen, I'm going to be honest with you, mate. It's not really for me, all that shit. I said, well, we'll fuck all that off. We'll just have it and see some mad stuff. And he was like, no, Paul. This is not magic mushrooms, mate. This is the spirit molecule. If you go to the other side at the wrong frequency, you're going to have a bad time. We're going to do some breath work. Have you ever done any breathing? And I was like, yeah, I'm alive. And he was like, you know what I mean, Paul? We're going to do some cyclical breath work. Activate the vagus nerve. We're going to do four seconds in, six seconds out. Four seconds in, six seconds out. So I was like, fuck, 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 fuck it, go on then. So I start breathing. And as I'm breathing, he starts going, right, Paul, you can feel your toes. Your toes are relaxing. Relax your toes. Are your toes relaxed? And I thought, they are, you know. But then I thought, I've never known my toes not to be relaxed. I've never once in my life thought my toes feel stressed out today. <laughs> my toes could use a little holiday. <laughs> so anyway, it's you, right? He carries on, he comes up my legs, up, right, up, up, up my back, down my arms, my fingers, back up my arms to the top of my head. So about six or seven minutes after which, I let the last breath out and he was like, you feeling okay? And you know what? I was. <laughs> and he goes, any anxiety? And you know what? There wasn't. And I thought, fair play. Do you know what? Maybe I've misjudged all this. Maybe I should keep an open mind. Then he goes, okay, we're ready to go on our journey. <laughs> and he pulls this bottle bong out, which, if you don't know what it is, it's just a two-litre bottle of water, which he has cut the bottom <laughs> off with a pair of scissors. He's got a bit of tin foil, which is made a little well, and he's got the DMT, it's like a yellowish powder. He's put some of that in the little well, then he's sellotaped that to the bottom of the bottle. So in about 90 seconds, he's gone from the Dalai Lama to a fucking crackhead. <laughs> and I can feel the anxiety coming back a little bit. Then he goes, okay, I'm going to fill the bottle with smoke, right? You're going to take your first hit, you're going to hold it for about 30 seconds. After which, uh, I, I, I'll refill the bottle, I'll give you a second one. We're going to go for three hits and you're going to blast off. <laughs> and I was like, what? He went, you're going to blast off. And I was like, okay. <laughs> Fills the bottle up, he gives it to me. I take the first hit, but my only frame of reference to smoking anything is weed. And weed is a very herbal taste and this is not it's very chemically. So as I took that first hit, it shocked me and it was very harsh on the lungs. And I went to cough and he went, no, don't cough. But I don't know if you've ever tried not to cough when someone tells you not to cough. You go, that, that, that. <laughs> Fucking came out of my ears and my eyes and shit. 
I was like, ah, oh, fucking hell. And he goes, oh, get the second one. So I took the second one off. And because I fucked the first one up, I tried to overcompensate with the second one. I hit that even harder. I was like, ah, oh, coughed a little bit again. I was like, shit. And he gives me the third one, right? He goes, get this one. So I got the third one. And I managed to hold that one. It was the mildest one of all three, right? And as I've let it out, I'm looking up at him. But he hasn't told me what to expect. He hasn't told me what was supposed to happen, which I feel like he should have. So I'm waiting, because nothing's, nothing's changed, it's pink and the music's on it, so it's a bit weird, but like, nothing's changed, and I'm thinking, like, I, I'm thinking, do I come up or something, is it like MDMA? He looked down, he went, you're all right, and I was about to go, I don't think it's worked, but what I said was, I don't think it's, and as I said that, he just went, boop, and he just turned into a fucking cartoon. <laughs> and when I say he was a cartoon, I don't mean he looked like a cartoon, I mean he was a fucking cartoon. <laughs> And not just him, the whole world changed, and I've never seen anything like that. And I was like, fuck off, fuck off, what the fuck, what the fuck? And he was like, you're all right, I went, mate, you're a cartoon, you know. He didn't reassure me or anything, he just looked at me and went, yep. He just fucked off, and when I sat on my cartoon couch, and I'm like, that flapping going, oh my god, I'm a cartoon, I'm a car fucking new, I shouldn't have done this, it's fucked up, I'm gonna be a cartoon forever. And I'm looking at me, I'm like, I'm, just, I'm trying to stay calm, thinking he said it's gonna be five minutes, it's gonna be five buttons as well, just try and keep your head on me, it's gonna be five minutes, then you'll be alright again, it's just a DMC, you're not a cartoon. I looked at me, and I'm like, I'm a fucking cartoon, mate. I'm a fucking cartoon, and the floor was a cartoon, and the chair was a cartoon, and then. I look at Ed in my living room on the wall. It's just this abstract painting. It's just colours and squiggles. I just got it because it looked all right to me. That's the only thing that hasn't become a cartoon. So I see it and I go, <gasps> that's the real world. <laughs> There's the real world there. Stay with that. You're going to be all right. That's the real world. That Just stay with that boy. You're going to be all right. And as I'm looking at it, it's just getting more and more vivid. And it just becomes the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. And I was like, <gasps> <gasps> have you seen this painting? And it makes like, yeah. Boop, 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 boop. And as I'm looking at it, all the colours start moving, right? And they start swirling together. And it just made like this woman's face, right? And I was like, oh. and the woman just starts going, and like beckoning me in. And I got up and I was like, and I got about this far away from it. And she just starts moving side to side, right? I don't know why I was just felt this connection. I'm just moving with her, right? Like fucking Stevie Wonder. This little tear came out of her, right? And I just felt overwhelming sadness. And I was like, oh no! My mate's like, ooh. <laughs> and the tear rolled right down her cheek, right? And then as it dropped off her cheek, she went, and I just felt all the sadness going away. I was like, <gasps> <sighs> Peyton's all right, Peyton's all right, we're all right. <laughs> and I stepped back, right? And as I stepped back, I sat down, and as my bum touched the seat, everything just went, whoosh, back to normal. I was like, fuck off, fuck off, what the fuck, what the fuck? My mate was like, you're all right? I went, mate, that's the maddest shit I've ever seen in my life. That's the maddest shit, that's, that's fucking incredible. And I swear, he just looked at me and went, well, I'll be honest with you, I don't think you've done it properly. <laughs> and I was like, what do you mean? He went, I don't think you blasted off. And I went, I think I fucking did, mate. <laughs> you've just been a cartoon, and I've just had a full relationship with the fucking squiggle, so. You call, he's like, no, no, I'm glad you had a positive experience. We'll leave it there for today. I'll go on my journey now. So I load the bottle up and give it to him. So we fair to him. He's a pro, he hits it hard. He's like, <gasps> then he sucked the fucking bottle and it was quite impressive, right? Give him the second one, he hits that. On the third one, he told me to count down from 10, right? So we'll give him it. And as he's letting it out, he's looking at me. And I go, 10. And he's full eye contact. I go, 9. He's full eye contact. I go, 8. And he just goes, <laughs> just out cold. But he wasn't fucking breathing or anything. And he had not told me that was gonna happen. So I'm shitting myself a little bit because I'm like, fuck, he's dead. <laughs> but he'd been very clear on this. He had said, right, while I'm undead, don't make any loud noises, no sudden movements because it can spill into me trip, ruin it for me. So I, I wanna check him to make sure he's all right, but I also don't wanna ruin the trip. And I'm just sat there going, don't be dead, 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 don't be dead. And it felt like forever, probably about 15 seconds, but it felt like ages, right? And after 15 seconds, he just went, and I was like, oh, thank fuck. And as I felt that joy of him being alive just wash over me, he just went, and I swear to God, right? He's fucking on my chair, and he's come up onto his shoulders and his toes like a fucking crab, and he's like, and I'm like, oh my fucking God, because he's a doctor, he's a doctor. And all the way home, he's been like, I don't actually care substance, Paul. You can't possibly over the. Now I'm watching this fucker, fucking Pulp Fiction in my living room at one o'clock in the morning. And I don't know what to do, he hasn't told me what to do. I'm like, do I EpiPen him in the heart or something? I haven't got an EpiPen, who's got a fucking EpiPen? 
He's just there. Ah! 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 And I'm like, oh my god, mate, stop screaming for fuck's sake. Stop screaming, I've got fucking neighbors one o'clock in the morning, man. I've got neighbors and shit, they're gonna hear you. And you're gonna die in my living room. What the fuck am I gonna do here? I can't even bury you, I've got artificial grass for it. He won't stop, he's just like, ah! ah! And I'm like, mate, stop screaming, stop screaming. Then he does stop screaming, and I fucking wish he'd carried on. Because it got so much worse. He's still up, he's up on his shoulders and his toes, just all locked out. And he's like, ah! Ah! And he just goes, ah! 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 And his head spun round, right? And his eyes opened, but he wasn't there. Just jet black eyes, right? And he fixed my eye contact, and his arm just flew out and pointed right at me. And he just went, ah! Ah! And your knees are the whole job of each other. Knees are the whole job of each other. Knees are the whole job of each other. Oh, two minutes and I have never been more terrified in my entire fucking life I just sat there like that going oh you know when you see a horror film you're like that's not realistic you just leg it you fucking wouldn't I sat there for two minutes waiting to die I was just like oh well, I'm dead and I deem my voice is gonna eat me I'll just sit here then is it yeah He's just like, whoa, 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 give me all his weight. And then he slumped and just went, <gasps> and his eyes rolled back and he just went, <gasps> and he sat up like, and I was like, fuck. And he went, mate. I went, lad, you all right? He went, <gasps> mate. I've done the MC loads. That's the maddest trip I've ever had. And I was like, fucking hell, mate, what's just happened? He went, mate, I've just been possessed by son. It said it was the creator of the universe. It's just let me feel its power. I've just moved a star. <laughs> what the fuck am I supposed to do with that? That's not what I wanted. I just wanted to see a Mars bar chase me down the streets or something. <laughs> Fucking creator of the universe. And I'm like, fuck off, mate. What? Are you messing with me, mate? Are you winding me up here? I don't like this anymore. You know, it's starting to get to me a little bit. He's like, mate, honestly, nah, nah. I swear, I was in the center of the universe and I felt everything and I knew everything. It was incredible. Then he took the power back off me. You know, it's weird. But the second half of the trip, he just kept telling me to tell you that you need to go again. And I was like, fuck off. <laughs> I went, mate, you've just been speaking to me in like devil tongues for like two minutes, you know, and he went, shut up, I went, you have, he went, lad, you've got to go again. The creator of the universe has just been in your living room telling you to do DMT. And I'm pacing up and down my living room like, fucking hell, I don't want to do it again, but like, can't say no to the creator of the universe. So I'm like, fuck it, fuck it, we're going to have to do it again, we're going to have to do it again. He's like, you sure? I went, yeah. He goes, do it properly this time. I was like, well, so I sat in a chair. He loads the bottle back up. I took the first hit. I knew what to expect this time. Still harsh, but I managed to hold on to it. Gets the second hit in, and I knew it was going to be different. As soon as I got that second hit in properly, the whole world just went wavy. And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> he gives me the third one, right? And I take it. I breathe it out, and he goes, turn. Nine. Eight. <laughs> And the world froze, and I was like, oh. Eventually, he said seven. But as he said seven, his head split into two heads, right? <laughs> and then he said seven again, his head split into four heads. And that just kept happening outwards like a kaleidoscope. Until eventually, the whole room was just full of me, mate. head just going seven, 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 seven. And I was like, ah! And it fucking freaked me out. So I closed my eyes to get away from me. And as I did that, I discovered what blasting off was, mate. Because I closed my eyes, and I just went, fuck off! I shot out of my body into a fucking rainbow, mate. A rainbow full of colours I've never seen before. And you know what? I didn't have a body and I didn't give a fuck. I was just like, I'm in a rainbow! I've never felt anything like it. I felt it because I was like, oh my God, I'm in a rainbow. This is amazing. And I'm flying through it, right? Then, as if that wasn't weird enough, right? Next thing, this giant black serpent thing just goes whoosh. Just cuts through the colour, just swings around me, then just looms over me with this big giant serpent head, right? But I wasn't scared because somehow, in some DMT telepathy language, he just told me he was sound. <laughs> he was like, don't worry about me, man. I mean, you know how, and I was like, okay. And he was like, keep doing what you're doing, Paul. Keep making people laugh. You spread positivity. And I was like, I will. <laughs> and he was like, do you want to go for a ride? And I was like, yeah. Then he got me on his back and he took me on a ride like fucking never ending story. <laughs> Through rainbow rivers and rainbow mountains, it was beautiful. And I felt like I'd been there before and I was going back there when I died. And it was me and I was it and we were all connected and it was amazing, right? Then he comes back around and he goes to drop me off and he goes, don't be a stranger, man. I was like, oh. He was like, I love you. I was like, I love you too. <laughs>
and I get off him right and as I get off him I just feel myself just get sucked back into my body and I, just, and I woke up like this to my mate's face about this far away from me like that just so fucking happy he was like did you blast off did you blast off and I was like fucking hell mate fucking hell was that real was that real that's fucking incredible was that real I felt like that was real was that real and he was like what did you see he was like right you're counting down from 10 he said 10 and 9 and he, then he said 8 and the world froze for fucking ages right then he said 7 and he then just split into two heads and then four heads he went like a kaleidoscope I was like yeah he went it's mad in it he went, then what did you say? I went, sorry, so I closed my eyes to get away from it. It freaked me out a little bit, right? And as I closed my eyes, I shot out of my body into this, like, fucking rainbow. He went, the colours are mad, aren't they? And I was like, yeah. He went, that's mad, isn't it? He went, then what did you say? He went, right, this is going to sound stupid. I feel daft even saying it, right? But I'm in this rainbow, and I don't even have got a body. I don't know what's up with them or what's down, but I feel fucking incredible. Then, next thing, this giant black serpent finger just comes out of nowhere, just swoops through the colour, right? Swings around me, just looms over me, this big giant serpent. But I weren't scared, because somehow, he just told me some DMC telepathy language that he was sound. Then he called me to keep making people laugh and spread out positivity and that. Then he took me on a ride through, like, rainbow rivers and mountains and that. Mad that, ain't it? He went, no, that's not mad. That's the cosmic serpent. I talk to him all the time. <laughs> And I was like, what? He went, yeah, everyone speaks to him. It's the origin of knowledge. I was like, fuck off. He went, Google it. I Googled it. He fucking is. <laughs> I don't know how it's possible, but people have written fucking books on this cunt. And I just don't understand it. And my head's fell off. Then that's got to be the biggest change. Because fucking two years ago, I was quite a strong atheist. And now I worship a fucking rainbow stink. <laughs> Mad. If you don't believe me, honestly, I'll, I'll prove it to you. <laughs> got him tattooed on my fucking chest. There he is there. I didn't have a fucking tattoo before I started doing this shit and I'm fucking covered in it now. There's Buddha. I met him the second time I did it. He's sound. There's some spacemen I met when I was doing mushrooms. <laughs> that there, that little evil joker devil thing. Apparently that's my shadow self. We had an awkward conversation in a minute. Uncomfortable, but necessary. Here, there, she's the main one, fuck me. The third time I ever did it, right? I, I, people don't believe this about me, but for a lot of my life, I suffered with anxiety a little bit. At odd times, it would come to me, right? And I've got one of them brains that fucking, you know, like, <laughs> it's probably why I've been scared of doing psychedelics. I've got, like, weird fucking intrusive thoughts. Like, the first time I ever held my little boy, I got him in my hands, and everyone's around me in the midwife's looking at me like, oh, all I could think of was, I'm going to throw this baby. <laughs> I wonder how far I could throw this baby. <laughs> fuck off! And I didn't throw the baby, but... <laughs> And that's what happened. I was going into a third time and my brain just went, hey, what if you had a panic attack right now? And I was like, fuck. And I started feeling anxiety and it filled my body. Then it left my body and it just filled the room. It was like an earthquake of anxiety. And I was like, oh shit, this is going to be bad. Then, next thing, this giant blue woman just turns up, scoops me up, just sticks me in a womb. <laughs> Absolutely fucking incredible. And I was trying to ask her all the questions. She went, why are you bothered, right? And I just laughed and she laughed. And then she went, bye. Gave birth to me. Never had anxiety since. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> great. I'll be honest with you. I think doing that saved my life. And like, uh, do you know what's mad, right? If you think a make or money is ever going to really make you happy, do you know what? It will. <laughs> I'm not going to stand here and say fucking being rich isn't better than being skint. It's fucking well better. But... What I will say is, if you're not happy deep down, it's not going to get you there. Do you know what, Will? Heavy psychedelics. <laughs>